Hey everyone, this is my attempt at breaking down Ekapadashir Shasana, or leg behind the head, which is a super deep external hip rotation, and it's a little bit complicated to get into, so I'm going to take it step by step. I'm going to do the left side because I like the left side better. You can do the side that you like better. Um, and first, I like to set up the posture by bringing the left foot, in this case, into the crook of the right elbow. So I bring it in there, and I want to set up some patterns that are going to be really useful throughout the entire posture by bringing the left foot towards the right shoulder at the same time that you allow the left knee to drop away from the left shoulder. So what I'm trying to do here is relax all of those muscles around the left hip. So in the glutes, in the front of the hip, in the lower back, all of those muscles, relax them as much as possible by allowing the knee to just naturally fall away from the left shoulder as you keep pulling the foot closer to the right shoulder. So in order to really feel the action of those muscles relaxing, maybe do the opposite. Pull the left knee in towards your left shoulder and then relax it away. And just feel the difference that you feel in the hip, like the action of those muscles. There's a difference there. And you want the feeling that happens when you relax the knee away from the shoulder. Okay, next part, we're gonna to start to bring the leg behind us. We're gonna bring the left knee behind the left shoulder. So I'm just gonna prop it up back there. So here what happens is, I think most students um, kind of get in their own way at this point. So we tend to bring that left hip way back. And I totally see the logic in that. We feel like if we bring the hip back, the leg will be closer to behind the head. But really what you're doing is you're putting the hip in a position that won't allow for the proper external rotation or a deep enough external rotation to bring the leg behind the head. So bringing the leg behind the head, basically what it is is the femur bone is externally rotating the hip, so hop, hip, sorry, hip socket so much so that the leg ends up behind your head. So we want that hip to be in the perfect position to allow that rotation to happen. And that position is bringing that left hip way forward. Don't let that left hip move back. So you want both hips in line with each other. And now this brings me to another really important part is the position of the pelvis. So you want the pelvis to be tilting posteriorly. That means the sit bones are moving forward. The lower back is rounding and lengthening and the pubic bone is lifting up towards the navel. So it's the expression that we use, tucking the tailbone under. That's what we're doing here. It's like the cow position, sorry, the cat position from cat and cows, when you're arching way up. So you're really rounding through the pelvis, through the lower part of the torso. And then we're here. So we have those three things that I've mentioned in place so far, relaxing the hip muscles by pulling this foot back, allowing that knee to move forward, even though that may seem counterintuitive. You're tucking the tailbone under and you're moving the left hip forward. Okay, from here, we can move the calf out of the way. So with your thumb, I like to use my thumb, just push it out of the way so it doesn't get in the way. And then you duck under and bring the foot behind the head. I know, easier said than done. If this isn't accessible for you, then I will show you something at the end that might help you prepare for this posture. So once we're there, sorry, I just need to take a little bit of a break. Okay, I'm gonna get back into it. So once you're there, a final thing I wanted to mention that's really important is that even though you're tucking through the lower part of the torso, the upper part of the torso is doing a little bit of a different action. You're gonna break away from that tucking and that rounding to a lifting and opening. So the shoulders are moving back, the chest is lifting up and the collarbones are spreading. So that's gonna help you keep the leg behind the head but also not bring too much compression in the lower back. So you're here and you can actually hold it by really opening through this upper part of the torso. And this is gonna become super important when you start to forward fold. So if you forward fold with the entire spine rounding, 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 then the leg will slip and you'll put too much pressure into the lower back. And one thing I've already mentioned, but I wanna mention it again. When the leg is back there, keep pushing the left foot back and allowing the left knee to move forward. So again, this is counterintuitive. Maybe you wanna move and force that knee back because you think that's the direction the knee wants to go in. But if you allow the knee to relax forward and you push back with the left foot, the left foot with the right shoulder, 
then you'll come into that external rotation and you might find a little bit of comfort in this posture. So it's the same action that we were doing here. It's just a little bit deeper because it's way back there. So if going behind the head isn't accessible to you yet, then you can do that same drill that we were doing of pulling the foot towards the shoulder and you can even do it lying down because it's a little bit more supportive lying down of just bringing that foot towards your right shoulder and you can even use your left hand to gently push the knee away from you as you pull the foot towards you. So this is really deep. You might be up here, which is totally fine. Gently bringing that foot towards your right shoulder and then trying to relax whatever doesn't need to be engaged in that position. Okay, it's a really hard posture. And this is just sort of what I've kind of discovered by working through this posture for the last um, five years or so. Uh, and it takes a long time to find the comfort. I have naturally flexible hips and it still has taken me about like five or six years to find some comfort in the posture. So, and this is where I am in my journey at this moment in time. So if you ask me to break down this posture in about a year, it might look a little bit different than it does right now. But I'm just hoping that where I am in my journey right now might bring some insight into where you are in your journey in this moment. And if it doesn't, that's okay. And if it does, then that makes me really happy. Um, if you have any questions, more questions about Akapada Shirshasana or any other postures, let me know. Let me know how this goes. All right, good luck and have fun putting your leg behind your head.